The Emir says the North is in such a bad place today because it hasn't sufficiently invested in education. The Emir of Kanu, Mohammed Sanusi, says policies like quota system and federal character have done more harm to Nigeria's northern region than good over the years. Sanusi, who made the remarks at the 60th birthday celebration of the Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai Kaduna, said in trying to implement affirmative action to allow the North catch up with the more developed and well of South, the region has emerged worse off. The Emir added that investing in quality education across the 19 northern states is the only way to save the region from endemic poverty and underdevelopment. Joining me in the studio is an education consultant, Chinenye Mbauzuku. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And of course, we also have um, Ahmed Alaga. You are the regional head of programs, Teach for Nigeria. Thank, Thank you. you very much Thank for you. your time on the news. So uh, the Emir seems to be saying something that, uh, you know, is very impactful. This thing was not supposed to be a long term solution it was to be something uh, for a while why is it taking so long to get it fixed well i guess i would say so it's, it's taking long because um nobody said when it was going to end it had no sunset clause and so it can take forever so once you start a program like that that's an affirmative action program you should actually have a sunset and i think this is the point that he's making that so long as you keep it there it becomes it becomes an evil as opposed to um, something that's good for the people an example would be so um, in simple terms if, if you know that you're going to get a quota in terms of admission then where's the incentive for you to try to go beyond that quota very little and if the, and if the quota is there and it's still not being filled then where is the incentive again to you know to push to fill the quota and to end the affirmative action. So it's only affirmative action when there is action. It's affirmative in terms of, well, they've created a framework, which is a policy that's supposed to deal with the historically disadvantaged situation, but it's supposed to go beyond that into, um, into actually achieving specific results. And those results are not known to me. I don't think they're known to anyone anywhere in this country that says, well, by year, year 10, here's where we're going to be. By year 20, this is where we're going to be. But we've done this for 50 years. And as is typical of many other policies in Nigeria, it just becomes like a, something that's, that's cast in stone and just continues, you know, ad nauseum. Okay, um, we saw in the previous uh, video, I'm trying to um, see if we can have a clip of it as we uh, talk, but we'll get back to that in a bit. Let me just ask you, what would be... Um, a way to put an end to this without actually making the North be at the disadvantage? Well, basically, I think it's just going back to the drawing board and identifying solutions that are more relevant to uh, the needs as they are now uh, and not as they were. And um, that would require a lot of innovation um, that are cost effective. Um, I'm saying cost effective because uh, we tend to over budget and over plan for simple challenges. Um, then um, just basically working with uh, other organizations who have done this before. I, I think that uh, the solution is not so far away. Um, there are many competent Nigerians who work in the space and who are doing something remarkable to addressing the problem. So um, it's basically going back to the drawing board realizing that this is not going to work or is not working, and then identifying what solutions are out there that can address them. And like the Emir said, it requires a lot of investment, not just in, in terms of funding, but in terms of um, human resource, uh, maybe technology. And I think that's what uh, we at Teach for Nigeria are basically doing and just trying to invest back in the community and identifying people as resources who can shift that change and take it to that former glory that it used to be. Do you think you're up for the challenge? Nigeria has over 200 million people. Do you think that, I mean, uh, you can cover this or you would um, look at your model being replicated or something? Oh yes, I mean, I think the plan for us, I mean, if you look at our vision, we say that one day every child will have, you know, access to excellent education. Uh, even though we're just in three states for now, uh, but we've seen an, a massive interest in the work that we're doing. 
our application process for uh, fellows to join the fellowship program was launched just about a week ago. And so even just on the first day, we've had a huge amount of interest. So yes, we've seen that we have some of the resources to address that problem. As much as our population might be a challenge, there's some advantage to it. And if you have the right resources to develop that human cap capital, it will be to our advantage. Okay, uh, just before I let you go, I wanted to ask um, the question. There was a, a video we played on, you know, efforts to educate uh, students in school and pupils as well on the dangers of drug abuse. And we do know there is a certain situation. We had the sweet codeine thing that was done by the BBC. There is a situation up not. Is that trying to make education relevant um, for the people uh, in that area, maybe across board? Is it for everyday use? What do you make of that effort? Again, um, anything, you, once you talk about education in Nigeria, you know, I, I tend to think of one child. I don't think of a child from north or a child from the south. The drug problem exists extensively in the southern states as much as it does. Well, to in some extent, north. as much as, uh, to, to some extent, maybe a bit less than, than what you find in the north where we have figures as, as high as 60% you know, in, in, in some states where you have 60% of youth having done some form of drug abuse or the other. It isn't so much about education as much as, I, I'm, not too, I'm not too convinced, I'm not an expert in that, in that area, but I would, I would say this. Anyone who is gainfully employed or, or engaged in the process of improving oneself would find it extremely difficult as well to, to also carry, drug. to engage as well in drugs. So the problem we have is a problem of poverty. It's a problem of, of unemployment. It's a problem of a lack of direction, ideology. People are looking for what to live for. They are basically and saying that is not restore, where to start. Well, I, I think there are lots of things that have to be done at the same time. Certainly what they're doing is correct because there is ignorance. But the ignorance is not the issue. The ignorance is that there's a, there's a more fundamental problem which has to do with how the society itself is breaking down. And the fracture within society itself is, is in multiple parts. Once that happens, you have a lot of, I mean, you just go on Twitter. There's so much pain in Nigeria and Twitter. And there are also a lot of jokes that people are cracking just to get away, as though to deal with the issues that they're confronting. Oh, we're it's Nigerians who tend to be good at that. Absolutely. <laughs> Smile, suffering and well, smiling. We've got to find a way to deal with these things. And, and for, unfortunately, drugs and um, alcohol and, and deviant behavior, excessive alcohol and other deviant behavior becomes a way to get away from some of the problems that we're having. So we've got to go to the roots and we have to be bold in terms of going back to that root and understanding that we need to fix our society. You can't fix parts of it. And the okay. most fundamental thing in fixing society is, I mean, look at China. 25 years, only 25 years, they took 650 million people out of poverty in 25 years and became a, a, an economy that was competing with the US. 25 years. So if we start today, before 2050, if we, we do the right lucky. things. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you very right much, gentlemen. I'm afraid that's all time. We'll let us yeah. uh, take on. But thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you,